The following program is brought to you in fabulous color on Pansy Vision TV. Well, bonjour mes petits choux. You caught me having a little sip of my favorite cocktail, a Reina Whiskey Fizz Bender. Oh, it's so deliciously self-destructive. As the old show business saying goes, without homosexuals there would be no Broadway. And so it goes without saying that without the queer community, there would be no Hollywood. In fact, all five major movie studios were all founded by gay, lesbian, and transgender mavericks. At least, I think that's true. I'm pretty spilificated right now, and you're all looking so ravishing. The history of queer cinema is as rich as it is diverse. But like all art forms, we must preserve it, lest it become lost forever. That is the mission statement of Pansy Vision. Where every week, we'll work to connect you with not only its proud history, but also its fabulous future. Because queer culture didn't begin with Ian McKellen, even though he would probably wrestle with me over that. And I would beat him. Trust me. Wouldn't be my first time at the rodeo with that tired old queen. The first stop on our cinematic adventure is the 1970s. Oh, they were truly an exciting time to be alive. Disco music, shag carpeting, quaaludes. Oh, quaaludes, my old friend, how I miss you. And even though America still faced its challenges, like the great cocaine shortage of 1976, it seems like our nation was out partying and our movies and television shows reflected this newfound optimism. And nothing said optimism like the 1974 TV show, Bear Claw. Let's take a look at a clip. He's a five foot seven inch, 240 pound, 50 year old mountain lion of bulletproof justice. He is Detective Lester Dabrowski of the Providence Police Department, but those on the force, as well as the enemies of justice, call him Bear Claw. And in the explosive pilot episode, Bear Claw will take on mob boss Quinn Martini. To kill Bear Claw, you need to aim for his most vulnerable spot. His left nipple. No, I said vulnerable, not sensitive. The nape of his neck. No, I mean he's over 50. You can shoot him anywhere, he'll probably die. Forget I said anything. His right nipple. <laughs> oh, my nudge. This is a stun pen. When you push this button, a dart shoots out and it can immobilize your opponent for 10 seconds. Great. What's that thing? This is a laser watch. When you push this button, it emits a beam that could burn through iron. Amazing. What's that thing? This is a CPAP machine. You have sleep apnea. It could kill you. Apnea, my ass. Special guest star Orson Welles as Chief of Police Vic Mustang. You've really crossed the line this time, Bear Claw. And I'll do it again. Anyway, it looks like rain. Yes, it's a little cloudy. Hi, Cuddle Cakes. I'm home. Sweetie. I made us a special dinner. What the hell is that? I made garden salads. The doctor told me I had to put you on a diet. Justice doesn't count calories, only bullets. And cameo appearance by Oscar winner Shelley Winters as Dr. Marcus. Your heart rate is through the roof. Your breathing is labored. As your doctor, I'm gonna have to demand you switch to menthols. Justice doesn't smoke cools. Oh my, in that light, with that expression, you, you look just like Ernest Borgnine. Wow. Hey, Bear Claw, what makes you the baddest, meanest dude on the force? Uh, war. I made 
made the mistake of falling in love with my commanding officer, David. We had an affair we had to keep secret from everyone. One day, David went out to do recon when he was shot by the Anita Bryant resistance front. Jesus, Bearclaw! What the hell happened to you? War. And donuts. Or hell! With Abe Vigoda as Bearclaw's police partner, Stanley Onions. Mr. Onions, please oh. try to breathe normally. You're going to pull through this, Stan. You've got to, buddy. I don't know, Bearclaw. Everything is going dark. Tell my wife I love her. Doctor, isn't there anything you can do? Mr. Claw, at this point, all we can do is pray. Oh! It's just a routine colonoscopy. You can take it. This might be an every night event for you, but it's an undiscovered country for me. <clears throat> he must have come up through the Gulf Stream. Oh! 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 oh. oh. High Octane Action meets a high cholesterol hero. Bear Claw, Friday nights at 8 p.m. in color. Well, it's been an honor working with you, Mr. Wells! I know it has! When does this damn scene end? I have a commercial to film in a minute. Paul Monsoon Wine, take one. Action, Orson. <sighs> Orson? Um, uh, the French is well. Now, to learn more about Bear Claw and its production history, we have unearthed an archival interview from 1998 with its producer, Mr. Evan Roberts, in his posh San Fernando Valley pad. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this is Evan Roberts, the man who brought the world award-winning box office bonanza motion pictures like Revenge of the Twinks, Naughty Young Men, and of course, Dilf Beach. So how come he produced a long-running television series about a husky guy in his 50s? Yeah, close enough. Because not everyone can have the life I do. Not everyone can have their pick of the litter like I do. You identify an unserved market, and you cater to it, huh? You cater to it all day. <laughs> and most of the audience is lumpy schmoes who couldn't get their dick sucked if they cut it off and threw it into a tornado. Who makes movies for them? So I made Frank Donuts, about a fat cop. Sold so many tickets that networks were fighting over me to come up with a weekly version. So after some development, some grade A Peruvian booger sugar, <laughs> We came up with the show that we all know and love as Bear Claw. It won its time slot consistently the first year it was on the air. You know it. And then we came up against Happy Gays in season two. I'm still in therapy over that. But for a while there, we were cranking out Bear Claw lunchboxes, Bear Claw underoos, Bear Claw Bear Claws. And do you know who had a piece of every one of those sales? This magnificent bitch right here. That's amazing. I had a bear claw lunchbox as a kid. Of course you did. Every boy had to have one. And I thank you and my cocaine habit thanks you. Yeah, the little dyke girls had Miracle Lady. The little gay boys had bear claw. The hetero kids? I don't know, they had a rock or something. Dried bits of mashed potatoes somebody fished out of a dumpster. <laughs> Dog turds. Yeah, the f hetero kids had dog shit and mashed potatoes to play with and they were happy with it. But, uh, anyway. Bear Claw. It was a good show. Evan Roberts tragically died of a massive heart attack 
two hours after this interview was taped. He was 37. I hope you enjoyed this maiden voyage of Pansy Vision as much as we did bringing it to you. Join me next week as we take a look at another lavender chapter of queer cinema. And until then, my little queerlings, stay fabulous. Coming up next on Pansy Vision TV, Jimmy Stewart and Charles Nelson Riley paint the town pink when they go on an hysterical adventure in New York City's Tenderloin District in 1963's The Man Who Shot on Liberty Valance. <laughs>